With all of the new AI features that are getting rolled out inside of the Google Ads dashboard, along with the changes that are coming to the way that people are actually interacting with Google Search, we're finding a really, really fast trend that your account structure is far more important than any individual optimizations that you can complete inside of your Google Ads campaigns. That's not to say that you don't need to optimize your Google Ads campaigns anymore, but it is just a very strong data-driven reminder that your account structure is the single most important optimization that you can do inside of your Google Ads account in this new AI age. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the three-step process that we complete and the three core factors that we look at so that we can put together the best account structure for any individual business. And one thing I really wanna focus right now is that what I'm gonna be teaching you in this video is the process and not any secret strategy or secret account structure. And the reality is, is that no individual YouTube teacher or coach or guide can give you that answer. So you can't just go onto a YouTube video or LinkedIn post or an Instagram or TikTok video to find the best structure for your business. And the reason for that is because every individual business is different. And what this process is all about is finding the right structure, which is the best suited account structure for your individual business. And the process I'm about to take you through is something that an e-commerce business based here in Australia actually saw an additional $56,000 in revenue from just an increase in $6,000 in spend. Well, a lead generation company saw in the first 30 days of us rolling out this new account structure, saw a doubling in the daily new clients that their business was getting. And in both those cases, the changes were really about adjusting their account structure so that it better aligned with their business goals. If you're a business owner and you're currently running Google Ads and you do need some extra help with your Google Ads so that you can get the best results for you and your business, at Define Digital Academy, we'd love to help you in any way possible. So if you follow the link in the description below, you're going to see a form which simply says, how can we help you? You go through and fill it out. We'll be in touch to let you know the best ways that we can assist you growing your business with Google Ads. So with all that said, let's get into this three-step process for how you can go through and look at to create the best account structure for your business. And the first thing is, is that you need to decide what levers you need in your business marketing with Google Ads. The term levers is not a Google Ads term and it's a term that we use internally when we're going through and reviewing an account. When we talk about levers, what we wanna do is we wanna create a campaign structure that has different segments in it at the campaign level that allows us to either focus or hold back spend or go through and optimize the bidding strategies to better meet different products or keyword themes. What you wanna remember inside of your Google Ads account, the spend is limited at the campaign level and also your smart bidding is controlled at that campaign level. So when it comes to creating different campaigns or breaking out different campaigns, that's the real reason you're doing it is you either wanna focus some more budget or either control some budget on certain products or keyword themes, or you wanna run different smart bidding strategies across different keyword themes or products or services inside of your business. And I want you to think about four main areas for why you'd create levers inside of your business. And the first one is for product category or keyword performance. So let's just say you have three main product categories and you might have two of those product categories which are performing around about the same in that they get the same level of volume, same level of ROAS, or you might have another product category or a service category which may have a much lower total volume, but it's got a really, really high profit margin. And in those cases, it's often better to break out that product category or keyword themes into a separate campaign. Because if you don't do that, what will generally happen is that those products or keyword themes that have a higher volume will take all the spend, if, especially if they're lower profit products or services, it could really, really be holding back your business in terms of the potential revenue you could be seeing in Google Ads. So you firstly want to be thinking about the search volumes and also the profitability of different products or keyword themes. Secondly, is you need to think about your locations. And there's a couple of different factors here. Say, for example, for an e-commerce brand, you may be running inside of the Australian markets, the US and also the European markets. And in scenarios like that, it makes a lot of sense to break out your budgets into those different areas. For a perfect example being that the US market has a much larger population base than the Australian market. Also as well, even though both countries speak English, there's a lot of the time a lot of differences in relation to the targeting or the use of search terms that people can be using. But even on a smaller level, you might have a business that only operates in one city, but you may have to break that city up into different areas. And it could be because you have different franchises or you have different trucks running in different parts 
parts of the city. Once again, that makes a really, really valid reason for why you'd want to break out those campaigns into different clusters of cities or different clusters of postcodes or zip codes, dependent on how you need to control the budget and how you need to control those profit metrics. The third reason for why you may want to create some levers inside of your Google Ads account is seasonality. You might have a whole heap of products or services which are much busier through spring and summer. Then you might have another collection of products and services which are more popular through the autumn and winter months. So that's another really, really valid reason for why you may want to have different levels of campaigns to be able to control those spending patterns. And then finally, you also need to look at issues like your actual current results that you're seeing or even your profit margins. And that one really comes down to it could be your cost of goods sold or the ongoing costs of fulfilling those product keywords or services. And then within that, you might have an existing account. And if that's the case, you then want to also look at the actual keyword performance and product category performance because there are some scenarios where you can scale faster by breaking out products or categories, which we call sidekick products, where you may be getting some really, really good results, but Google's just not spending money there. So you may want to break that out into another campaign so that you can then force Google to spend more money on those keyword themes or product categories that it's kind of neglecting. But with all those scenarios, we want you to think about the business owner or the management level. You want to be able to create an account structure where we're seeing really, really good results in a certain area so that we can then purposely funnel more budget into those areas, or you may have another area of keyword themes or products which are not performing well, and you may want to hold back budget or spend in that area, complete some further optimization so that you can then is start to increase those budgets again. So it's really about looking at what controls of spending and smart bidding do you want across your account, which is best suited to your business. So once you thought about the levers that you wanna create inside of your account, the next thing that you wanna really, really be thinking about is what offers and what messages will you use inside of your Google Ads campaign? And what a really, really important message is, is if you haven't started Google Ads yet, or you're not seeing those results inside of Google Ads, you really wanna be looking at and thinking about your offer and the messaging that you're putting out into the marketplace. This is a hard truth, but what you really do need to understand is that the best campaigns in the world can't save a bad offer. The best landing page can't save a bad offer. Your best ad copy can't save a bad offer. Even the best video ad or ha headline can't save a bad offer. You really need to understand that a strong offer is an essential requirement for success with Google Ads. A common frustration that I do hear from people who are not seeing success with Google Ads is that they can go into their Google Ads account, they can check their search terms report, and they can go, see, look, our ads are highly targeted. We're getting people to go to our website, but we're still not getting any conversions. The chances are the problem has a lot less to do with your Google Ads account and more to do with your landing page and your offer. Because this is such a massive topic in itself, we've actually created a full another video for this. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll actually go and show you where you can see a video with me and also a copywriting and offer specialist where we do some live reviews of both an e-commerce brand and also a lead generation business and really break down how we increase the offers for those businesses. And from that, they're able to see greater success with their businesses. All right, so the first step is that you need to decide what levers or how do you wanna be able to control your budget spending and also your smart bidding inside of your Google Ads account. Then you need to work out what offer you wanna be offering people who are clicking on your ads. And then that brings us down to the third and important step, which is actually deciding how many campaigns and what type of campaigns you actually need inside of your Google Ads account. Now, what we are gonna do, we're gonna jump into a screen share because I do want this to be as practical as possible, but you also do need to really understand the different types of campaigns and how they interact with each other because one thing that you do want to avoid is that you wanna make sure when you go to an account structure that has multiple campaigns in it, you really, really need to make sure that every campaign has a real specific purpose and you need to understand how they're gonna interact with each other and you really wanna follow this golden rule that you only want one campaign targeting the same keywords or products to the same same audiences to the same locations inside the same account. And the reason for that is because you want to avoid the situation where you may make some optimizations in one account, but if you've got another campaign inside of the same account, targeting the same products and keywords to the same audiences to the same locations, the optimizations you've made in that campaign are just going to be undone by the targeting in this other campaign. So you do really need to make sure that you've got a real clear strategy and a thought process behind how these campaigns are going to interact with each other. And a simple way 
way of getting around this is just by knowing that with every campaign that you have inside of your Google Ads account, make sure it's got a really, really clear reason for why it exists and why it is there. And this is gonna become clear when I show you some examples and I can go through and explain to you the role and purpose of each individual campaign inside of these accounts. Let's go through and have a look. Now, the first thing I wanna show you through here, I'll just quickly show you an internal document that we use. You can go through and create your own document, but what I just really wanna show you is that what we do here is that we do go through this quick where we just go through and plan an account structure. We go through, ask the business about those levers they wanna create, and we just start writing them in around you know keyword service performance, seasonality, location targeting, also their cost of goods sold or profit margins. And then we'll literally just go through and draw out what we want that campaign structure to look like. Then if you want to, you can go through your actual headlines. And then once you've actually got your levers that you wanna be able to control through the business, and then you've got a list of what campaigns you wanna use, you can then start matching up your account messaging and your headline messaging and your offers to make sure it aligns with those other two things. So, so what I wanna do right now, let's jump into some real life Google Ads accounts and I'll just walk you through some different structures that we've put through. Remembering with this process that I wanna take you through, it's not about what's right and wrong. It's actually more about what best suits the individual business. And that's what I really want you to start thinking about with Google Ads. It's not about trying to find this secret strategy or this secret account structure, which is guaranteed to find your results. It's more about working out what you as a business needs and what success looks like for you so that you can then go through and create an account structure, which is best suited for your business. Let's firstly start with a local business. I'm going to give you some examples of smaller businesses and also lead generation and e-commerce. This one's a smaller business. For them right at the moment, they're just really, really early into their Google Ads ads journey. And it's purely just they've got two search campaigns. The key segmentations we've got here, they've got two core services, which they are promoting. So we've got service one here and service two here. And that's it. Now, the reason for why we've broken it out that way is you can see this second service down through here. It's not getting nearly as many clicks as it's coming through. And you can see here, you know, 43 clicks, but it's hitting 72% of the search impression share. The reason for that is, is that that's a really, really low volume search. When they get some conversions here. This is only a new account. This is like six to 12 months of work. So that's why for us, we broke that into a separate campaign so that we can control the spending. Otherwise, this top campaign would have just taken all of their Google Ads budget. This top service is kind of like their bread and butter service and it's kind of what gets people in the door. So that's why we also wanted to break it out into a different campaign. So that first example is a real, real perfect example of how you can just have a really, really simple structure of two search campaigns built around your core services and your core keyword themes. Let's move into a second account. And this is an account which is a, another lead generation business. They've got four core search campaigns. One of those search campaigns is a branded campaign. So that campaign down the bottom here is targeting their brand name and it's only exact match keywords. And we've just got it set to basically just make sure that when other people are searching their brand, they've got quite a unique brand name and quite a unique offering. So that's why we set it as exact match only. And we just wanted to pull that out from all the other elements of their spend. And then what we've got from here is three search campaigns. And these three search campaigns are built around three core services. Now, at the moment, we've got this set to targeting all of Australia. This is an Australian based business. But once we get more data, we will potentially break this out into regional campaigns. They run a really good online health service. So we really see some opportunities to really go through and target some of the lower population geographic states with this service. But we just, at the moment, we're collecting some more data and then we'll build out to that way from there. And then from there, we have a performance max campaign, which we've only just started in the last two weeks because we had to fix up their offline conversion tracking. And what this one is, is this one's targeting new customers. As a bit of a side note, Google has thrown up some funny things with targeting new customers only where there was a reported bug in May of this year. We did see that start to attack it yet, although it hasn't been officially reported. But what we have done is we've built these search campaigns based on exact match keywords. And then we've got this performance max campaign, which is set to maximize conversions but the only assigned conversion is the converted leads, which is offline conversions interaction coming through. And that's what separated those out. So this is a different structure, which is working really well from here. One thing I do wanna show you in with these core services from here, I wanna show you these, the top and the bottom one here is search campaigns. These one is a performance max. And you can see here through their CPC, that's you know $10, $18 and $3 within the performance max. So what we've done with that performance max campaign is it's allowing us to create more volume so that we can, you know, 
you know, get the best reach through our account. And in case anyone is wondering with that Performance Max campaign, that actually does have different asset groups for their three individual core services. Now let's go into a e-commerce campaign. And let me show you an example with this one is with this business, they were getting 20 sales a day. And through these little tweaks, which I'm gonna show you now, we've been able to increase it to above 40 sales a day. And what the problem was here is they just had a little bit too much confusion in their account. Remember how I was saying that every account needs to have a really, really good reason to exist? With this campaign, what they had here is they actually had initially three Performance Max campaigns. And what was happening there, all three of those campaigns were kind of bleeding into each other. So what we did is we paused one of their Performance Max campaigns and then set some really clear guidelines between their two remaining Performance Max campaigns. We obviously removed brand from both of them and then really focused in on their two core product categories. And then what we've done from there as well, because the way that this campaign was working, their Performance Max was very much targeting their shopping network. So what we did is we also added in some targeted search campaigns. We've got a third search campaign, which is for brand only. So essentially what we've got through here is we've got replicated a Performance Max campaign for each of their core product categories and then a search campaign. The reason why we did that as well is that when we went through and looked at the channel data, this is inside of a Performance Max script, we saw that both of their Performance Max campaigns were pretty much solely targeting the shopping network. So that's why we added in those search campaigns. My purpose of showing you those account structures wasn't so that you go through and just replicate them in your same account. It was more so that you could actually really see the process of with every campaign that you've got inside of your account, you should have a really, really clear reason for why they exist. And what that also allows you to do is that when you've got that a real clear idea of how you need to set your account structure, it allows you to then go through and when you do some optimization actions like going through and checking your search terms, you can make sure that your search campaigns are targeting the right keywords or the performance max campaigns are targeting the right products and the right keywords. As I said, if you do need some extra help with your Google Ads account, where there's multiple ways that we can help you. And this goes from one-off coaching all the way through to our new on-demand program, which is is a done with you management program, which is seeing amazing results for businesses like yours. If you'd like to find out more information, just go through and follow that how can we help you link below. And as promised, remember point two, which is all about your offer and your landing page. If you wanna learn more right now and see those live reviews from me and also a guy called Will Wang on how we go through and review and improve offers and landing pages, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.